I'll never forget, she heard it on the radio, we were in the front room, she was jumping up and down, and she landed on the settee, and I said, hang on, you know you're not allowed on there. <laughs> and her parents are from the north of Ireland, they're from Belfast. <laughs> yeah, they're struggling as well, I mean, it's a shame. This peace process has hit them really, really hard. Because they've got a balaclava factory over there. <laughs> Jerry Adams only last week sent his mobile phone back because he's heard the future's orange. <laughs> I mean, it's getting so hard for you, but I've got a problem. My wife's a dreadful cook. Dreadful. I mean, have you tried rare pork? Or rhubarb pie, two foot long and two inches thick? I mean, she's got, she's got it now, though. What she's done now? She buys two turkeys now, a big one and a little one, and puts them in the oven together. Yeah. When the little bug is burned, the big bug is cooked. Bless her. And I've been doing a lot of travelling lately. And as the night progresses, you'll discover that with an act like mine, you've got to travel. I've been doing a lot of the cruise ships. Anybody been on the cruise ships this year? Yeah. What's the biggest thing you do on the cruise ships? Eat. eat. Yeah. And eat. Yeah. And eat some more. Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous the amount of food you put. You know the average increase for one person on a two week cruise? Well, I'll tell you. It's ten pounds per day. <laughs> <laughs> the last cruise I on, this one was complaining very, very loudly. The previous ship she'd been on had one of these climbing walls, you know these walls that you climb up on? We didn't have one. And she was going mental, because we didn't have one. Finish up, I said, Madam, give us a break. The only way you get this lot to climb a wall is to write the words buffet at the top of it. <laughs> so there I was talking to my cabin steward through his interpreter. Because <laughs> I mean, they're good lads, aren't they? About 10 months at sea, they do. I think this lad was from the Philippines, they work ever so hard. So I get chatting to him, I said, are you married? He said, oh yeah. I said, are you married? I said, any kids? He said, ten. I said, ten kids. So with that, he's proudly pulled out the family picture. Well, he's shown me the picture, me and the band are falling about laughing. I mean, one of the kids is so different from all the rest that it's an absolute joke. Well, I've heard what happened at the end of the cruise, he's gone back home and he's pulled the wife. And he said, oh. he said, I happened to show the entertainer the family picture, and him and the band have fallen about laughing. She said, why? He said, well, they reckon that that fifth child of ours has got a completely different father to all the rest. She said, it has. He said, who is it? She said, it's you. Sweet music. 
couple of nice moochie dances, a couple of bottles of vino colapso. <laughs> then we go to one of these discotheque queues and we boogie away for a couple of hours, work up a nice sweat like I'm doing now. Then we check into a five star hotel and we make mad, passionate love all night. All night. It's fantastic. She goes Tuesdays, I go Fridays. <laughs> And this little um, granddad. And he said, Granddad, he said, You were in the war, weren't you? He said, Yes, sir. He said, um, Did you ever meet uh, that Adolf Hitler? He said, Oh, I said, yeah. The little boy said, What was he like, Granddad? He said, Well, I can't really say, except to say he was about that big and he lived over there. <laughs> This English fellow was uh, taking coach parties all over the British Isles. He was a courier, coach driver, tour, you know, talked about all the places. Did a great job. Went to one of our beauty spots in the southwest of the country, the Cheddar Gorge. Well, as he introduced me, he said, Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Cheddar Gorge, created in such a way that if you shout your name into the gorge, the echo here is so strong, it's 30 seconds before your voice comes back to you. Well, just then, this big 70s, this big American in the crowd, stood up, 6 foot 12. He said, Gene, man, he said, that's nothing. He said, back home in America, we've got a canyon called the Rio Grande. He said, man, that Rio Grande is so vast. If you shout your name into the Rio Grande, it's half an hour before your voice comes back to you. So the little pony carrier turned around, he looked at this big Yankee, he said, he said, you know something? He said, back in 1942, we blew a bugle. It wasn't until 1945 that you buggers heard it. <laughs> I don't know why, you've nothing to upset me. Yeah. I've got a few albums uh, that I do have on sale. Purely by coincidence, I do have to have a few copies with me today. I've got 3,000 at home in a bloody war at home. Yeah. They're just starting to pile up on them a bit now. We've got any golfers in here today? Anybody play golf? Any husbands play golf? I played golf yesterday. Lovely day yesterday, wasn't it? Fell in our party, got a sunstroke. It was his own fault, he kept hitting the ball on the fairway. <laughs> we were all in the trees. <laughs> it was bad though, they had to rush him to hospital. They rushed him to hospital. The doctor gave him two tablets. He said, one for the sunstroke, and the other one's Viagra. <laughs> he said, what's the Viagra for? He said, it'll keep the sheets off you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not you falling out of bed. No, I love my golf. Play golf all the year round in England, all sorts of weather. Six o'clock every Sunday morning, me and the lads down at the club. Big mug of coffee, couple of bacon rolls with the HP sauce, 18 rounds of golf, back to the clubhouse, a shed load of beer, then back home for the Sunday ritual, the Sunday lunch. I got up this particular Sunday morning, the wife says, where are you going? I said, yeah, I'm going, it's Sunday morning, golf. She said, have you looked out of the window? I said, no. She said, there's 12 inches of snow out there. I said, that will deter us. All kinds of weather. We'll play it. See you later. I go down to the golf club. The golf club's locked up. Darkness. Car park's roped off. The greens are roped off. There's not a soul there. So I'm feeling very, very embarrassed. Because I know I've got to go home and face the music. So while I'm driving back home, I'm thinking, I said, right. So I freewheel down the drive. Close the car door very quietly, go into the house, undress downstairs, stars, not a stitch on. Creep up to the bedroom, the wife still in bed facing the window, pull the duvet back and slyly slide into bed as you do, and snuggle up to a spoon fashion. I said, it's absolutely Baltic out there. She said, yeah, and that silly bug is out playing golf. <laughs> Kevin Space is a guy that I admire tremendously, not just for his acting, but he's a fantastic impressionist. And uh, he's made a movie here recently, which is a tribute to, without doubt, 
the greatest swing singer, I think that, uh, that we ever had. He was tragically taken from us at a ridiculously early age, I think he was 36. I'm speaking of the one and only Bobby Darren. Just as before